Hello everybody and welcome to the first of many Planet Zoo 2 speculation videos. So with Planet Zoo likely being over now with the Zookeepers Animal Pack sort of sounding more like a finale pack than most other DLCs could, we're, we're going to start speculating about what the sequel could provide players and well there's a lot to get through and I'm really excited to talk about a lot of this stuff and hopefully a lot of it does come to fruition so let's get started so the first and possibly most important new features are those that are currently being added into planet coaster 2 that would be translated into the planet 2 sequel so planet coaster 2 has a new pathing system which is a lot better from what i've seen than the planet 2 and planet coaster 1 pathing system so i'm really excited to see that the modular scaling as well, a scenery brush, there's also some new water physics uh, with the new pools and uh, yeah so when an animal jumps into the water there could perhaps be a much more realistic splash animation so that would be really cool and there's also more terrain tools per biome um, that would allow us to create some really unique landscapes. So first off is Avery. So Avery's is something that people have been asking for for the longest of times, as many zoos around the world do have Avery's, though I have been to a couple that don't, but they are in the majority. So Avery's would have free flying birds and bats, able to use habitat items specifically made for them like feeders, nest boxes, bat houses, perches, etc. All to give them a more habitat animal aesthetic rather than just an exhibit animal. So Avery's would be built like Habitat, utilising a setting which gives the Habitat a mesh roof, either ste being steel mesh or chain mesh. The height of Avery's can also be manipulated at multiple points to get different elevation to either make room for different trees you may have in the Avery, but also give the birds different heights at which they can fly to. Specific Avery scenery pieces like clay licks, dead trees, nests for different kinds of birds, particularly those that nest in trees, hollowed out trees with nesting space for animals like macaws and hornbills. Paths going through Avery's would have special railings that birds are able to perch on and interact with guests. Guests can even be given the opportunity to feed certain birds with a cup of nectar, fruit or seeds. In some cases, birds like the rainbow lorikeet would be able to land on guests, on their shoulders, on their heads or on their arms, potentially even on their backs, but I'm not sure about that. Tunnels can also go through Avery's for bird species like the half the eagle, allowing guests to get closer to these majestic birds than ever before through a mesh, wooden or glass covered path. Birds can also be given the option to not fly, um, sort of like trimming their, their flight feathers, which is something that happens in a lot of zoos to create open air habitats. Species that um, would be having this feature would include many of the current ones like greater flamingo, red crown crane, the peafowl and the moot swan, but some new ones like vultures could also receive it. Different birds would come in very different varieties to basically diversify the roster. Birds like macaws would have five or more species to create a wider roster of these animals and have a greater variety of these particular species so that players can have the choice on what coloured macaws they have, whether they be a scarlet macaw, a great green macaw, or a blue and yellow macaw, etc. The next biggest feature is aquariums. So aquariums would be built much like habitats, with their shape and size determined by the player. Custom water depth that can be adjusted depending on the kind of creatures being kept, with some like the whale shark requiring greater depth due to their immense size, but others like cow nose rays being more versatile and not minding a shallower body of water in comparison. So being able to control the water depth will allow a greater range of creativity for the players and allow us to create some really unique exhibits, potentially even a mangrove setting. So most species would be free swimming, but terrain can be placed at the edges of these aquariums for semi-aquatic animals like the green turtles to use, also allowing for unique mixed species habitats between some of these species and the fully aquatic kinds. Aquariums can be both fresh and saltwater based, depending on their inhabitants. Wave generation can also be added to create unique effects on the surface. Some aquarium scenery pieces could include living coral, eroded rocks, kelp, anemones, sea stars, urchins, various kinds of shellfish, 
submerged trees and branches, among various other pieces to liven up these aquatic environments. Viewing tunnels can also be used to give guests an in-depth view of their aquarium, bringing the animals even closer. Other, species, other pieces, I mean, like bubble view windows can be placed on the walls of the habitats to really create some unique perspectives. Pathing going through an aquarium can be given a glass setting, allowing animals to swim below the guest path and for guests to look down below their feet and see something swim under. That's something that's in a couple of exhibits. I know there's a penguin exhibit and a sea lion exhibit. I don't remember um, which zoos they're from, but I remember seeing that and I thought, why not plant zoo have that? That would be really cool. So, so some specific habitat items can include the feeders, with fish being fed through a dispenser on the floor or potentially from keepers throwing the fish in from above. This could also work for plankton and vegetable matter for different animals like the whale sharks, manta rays, manatees and sea turtles all getting their food in different ways. Some specific guest experiences could be a shark cage dive, a guided dive tour, shark feeding, uh, touch tanks and perhaps even exhibits with shallow margins for guests to have the opportunity to feed other kinds of animals like manatees and carpet sharks like the zebra and nurse shark. If an aquarium sits on the top floor of a building, an outline could be drawn to create a specific shape and extended downwards to the floor below to create some unique effects such as at the Penguin Cove at Bird Paradise in Singapore where you got two tank columns coming down to extend the depth of the habitat. I think that'd be really cool to really create some unique habitats. That would be really cool. And building pieces being able to be used to hold water. So sort so not just having it as barriers and terrain, but potentially some scenery pieces if placed in the correct way can act as a way of keeping the water at a certain point. So I think that'd be really good at creating some unique habitats. So there you go, that's the Penguin Cove, and you can see what I mean. You've got these two tanks um, coming down from the main tank above. So I think that'd be really cool. One of the next most important things to be built upon in Plant Zoo 2 is a new exhibit system. Being able to build exhibits more like habitats, just at a slightly smaller scale. Um, we could also have exhibit specific terrain and water tools to allow us to manipulate how these exhibits look. Placeable exhibit items similar to the habitat items for many of the animals we have currently would be great. So stuff like feeders and enrichment items would be really good for some of these species. An expanded roster of exhibit species to include some highly requested examples like that of the King Cobra, the Panther Chameleon, Reticulated Python, Alligator Snapping Turtle and the Chinese Giant Salamander to name a few. Nocturnal house building pieces would be really good as well, which would allow us to block out the lights, specific um, specific lights to create unique effects, so sort of UV and infrared. Uh, noise dampening would also be a really cool feature to add in here to uh, make the lives of these nocturnal animals a lot quieter. And carpet pieces would also be great because many nocturnal houses, contrary to reptile houses, actually have a carpet, at least the ones that I've been in. And um, allowing us to create open air exhibits would also be really good. Staff access to the exhibits um, would allow us to create some really unique scenarios. So potentially having staff going in and cleaning up after the tortoises, uh, like radiated tortoises and rhinoceros iguanas, I think that'd be really good. And animals be able to move around their exhibits and interact with items in their space. And potentially even some species could be placed into larger habitats like iguanas allow us to create some really unique exhibits because I know I think it's the fragile forest at Singapore Zoo they have green iguanas in there I think um, at least last time I checked and like they were free roaming so I think that'd be really cool to create a very unique environment a subspecies variant system would all be very cool so all animals will be their nominate species in the roster, with a few such as the tiger having subspecies that could be selected, much like the variant system in Jurassic World Evolution 2. This would mean that some animals in the roster, like the Himalayan brown bear and grizzly bear, will instead be placed under brown bear. The Bengal and Siberian tigers will be placed under tiger, and the Amal and African leopards being simply placed under leopard. And the same would also go for the Arctic and timber wolves being placed under grey wolf. This would also allow for the inclusion of various other subspecies of different animals like the Sumatran tiger, Sri Lankan leopard, East African and Asiatic lions, 
Eurasian brown bear, as well as many for the grey wolf, adding subspecies like the Eurasian and Mexican wolves. African buffalo can also be divided into Cape buffalo and the forest buffalo from the Congo, allowing us to have a, a wider range of these animals. With the variant system for subspecies, a total of 191 species would be returning from the first game. And I have a suggested 25 new habitat animals that could be added in as well. So the first would be the Goodfellows tree kangaroo, um, as well as the muskox, South American quaddy, howler monkey, secretary bird, among various others that could be really good additions to start off the game with. I would really hope for these highly requested species to be in at first because we've waited for them for a very long time. And it's sort of getting a little bit more difficult to include them in packs. So yeah, the, these species would be some of my choices. And there are a couple of others like the Nile Crocodile, uh, Grevy Zebra, Kudu, Parenti. Um, all those species would be really good to have in, at the start. So for the regular habitat animals, a, a solid roster of 200 species, potentially even 215, if that were to be the case, um, of, new, of habitat animals, including the new ones, I think would be really good to start the game off with because I mean, many of the animals you can't just simply bring over from Planet 2-1. Yeah, like there are just a couple of things you need to do to them, but many of them can just remain the same. But there are a couple of new habitat species which I would count as either aquarium or aviary species, such as the walrus, rockhopper penguin, sea otter, great white pelican, shoebill, and mandarin duck. All those species could potentially be counting as aquarium or aviary species. A speculative deluxe edition I've come up with is honestly one I do quite like the look of. It'd be pretty good. Um, the animals would be actually quite worth it. I mean, the first deluxe edition that we got was pretty much worth it because you had the Komodo dragon and the pygmy hippo. Both those species I really like and I, I found to be worth including. But here I've sort of gone all out with five animals because, well, um, it makes sense to have a selection of five given the diversity of animals we would have in this second game. So the animals I've selected are the Golden Lion Tamarin, the Black Buck, the Grey Crown Crane as our Avery Bird, the Zebra Shark as our Aquarium Species and the Tuatara as an Exhibit Species, all of which would be fantastic to have as a deluxe edition and I'd certainly buy it in a heartbeat. So moving on to a couple of new, new things, so an expanded breeding and parental system. So young being carried by their parents and calves staying with their mothers um, would be really good to create connections between the parents and their young and it would be somewhat more realistic as the, animal, the babies don't just run off by themselves. Eggs for birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, invertebrates and monotremes would also be a really good feature to add possible growth stages as well so it, it would be basically with the the lion in particular the cub that we have is not really the cub I always imagine so we've got juveniles um, as our ba basic baby stage but um, I feel like it would be it would be much more realistic if they were born as infants uh, to start with so and then gradually they go up through infant juvenile which is what we have now adolescent and then adults because like that would that would create a much more realistic transition i mean it's not like a full ontogeny system as that would take a lot of work um like chris Rock kingdom's doing that but i don't think plant Zoo 2 necessarily has to do that and they don't necessarily have to do this either but i i just feel like it would add to the realism uh, speaking of adding to realism uh nursing for mammals would also be a really cool feature to add uh, to make a more realistic connection between the mothers and their young because the, the young have to stay with their mother because well the mother's both their protection protection and um, also their nourishment for a large um, part of their lives and nesting it going on with the eggs there nesting would be a really cool feature as well so sort of like the communal nesting that ostriches have where the male takes care of the eggs of multiple females i think that'd be really cool and crocodilians being able to make their nests as well. A revised climbing system is also very important for Plant Zoo 2. 
animals should take their time actually climbing around and make necessary maneuvers to get around rather than just simply running through and going th and um, clipping through the items like reduce clipping <laughs> reduce the clipping as well but having them take their time is very realistic so animals could look at where they're going to climb to and grab or reach out an arm or a leg and actually pull themselves towards it um, rather than just running up it and climbing straight up it. Some animals should also have somewhat more realistic ways of climbing down items and climbing up them because sometimes they just look like they're climbing a bit too easily as it would take a bit more effort to get up certain items and not to mention the balance um, that would also be a very important feature. Modular hammocks that can be placed as part of climbing frames would be really good. Like the hammock enrichment we have only is only works for two animals. So I feel like these modular hammocks would allow us to use them in a lot more habitats. Ropes of varying sizes that can react with the movements of animals would also be really good. So an, an O-line uh, form could also be used for the brachiating animals to move across large spaces while supporting their hands and feet. So this is something that you can see with orangutans and gibbons in many zoos these days. The brachiating species um, would also be able to perform this behavior more often as it is their primary climbing movement while on ropes, branches and climbing frames. So uh, I do find it weird sometimes when the gibbons just like run across the, the ropes rather than brachiate, um, especially when the ropes are over a death defying drop. I feel like, uh, yeah, the brachiation would be much better there. A selection of overhead pathway pieces would be um, able to make better and more realistic tunnels between habitats. Like you can do that now, but we don't really have any circular mesh. Um, so I think that would be a really cool thing to add in here to help us create um, more varied overhead tunnels. And I think that would just add to the realism of modern zoos. Though they could almost act as an extension of the barrier too that connects the two habitats but allows the animals to use them to move between them. Like that could work too and like you could change what they look like in, in certain ways but I feel like using them, doing them piece by piece would be a lot better. Um, arboreal enrichment items would also be great so enrichment items that actually hang from trees and climbing frames as well as hanging feeders um, that would also be a really cool feature for the arboreal species. Nest boxes for smaller climbing animals like the binturong, red panda, raccoon, um, those sort of animals. Um, and more metal climbing pieces could also be added um, to create some unique climbing frames. So there's a couple of expanded behaviors I have here. So better herding, so animals, um, particularly hoofstock, will stay together a lot more. The monitor lizards and pangolins will be able to climb. Koalas will stay in the trees more often. Um, and arboreal animals in general will do that. Uh, tapirs, water buffalo, elephants, um, Nile monitors and Indian rhinos will be able to deep, have a deep diving capability. Uh, the Indian rhino um, and buffalo don't necessarily deep dive in the way that the bears and some of the other animals do currently and neither do the tapirs. It's more that they run along the bottom um, and uh, have to keep them, themselves supported. So they're not properly swimming through the, through the water. So, but um, not, not to the same degree as the other deep diving animals that is. Um, adding diverse personalities such as shy, playful, inquisitive, clever, friendly, and aggressive will create a unique um, identity to an animal. So different animals would have their own personalities. And I think that'd be a really cool thing to have as not every animal is as confident or as shy as an eve may seem. Like you could potentially have a very confident okapi even though the rest of their species is rather shy. Um, aquatic play would also be really good for many animals as I know elephants do tend to play a lot in water and dogs um, and cats, at least the big cats do as well. Um, social grooming um, would be cool as well, particularly in the primates, cats and canids, as that is something that animals that are part of a group will generally do. So I've seen baboons um, through a large portion of their day 
actually grooming one another and I'll you'll see um, large cats like lions even grooming one another and wolves they'll do that too animals are able to rest in trees somewhat like the lazing behavior that the fusa and amal leopard have currently but they will perform it a lot more often for all climbing species like the cats the primates red panda binturong koala bears and the wolverine seals otters and penguins would be able to slide on slopes and slippery surfaces reptiles would bask in the open crocodilians can rest at the bottom of the water hippos floating at the surface of the water and um, taking a breath um, seals jumping at the surface of the water and penguins could even do that too um, meerkat and prairie dog sentries penguins able to leap out of the water through through like their uh, like an ice hole or something um, antelope and deer able to leap as they run with the spring block performing its unique pronking behavior and big cats will perform their territorial roars more often, with lions doing it at least once a morning and of an evening, as we really don't hear them um, quite often enough. Remastered models and textures. So the remastering of all the animals from the base game, deluxe edition, and the first and second years of DLC, um, with some exceptions in DLCs after that, would make the animals look a lot closer to the real thing, and there would also be a balance in design quality across the whole roster. There are certainly some animals in the roster that um, really need it. The lion in particular is very tunified and I think a realistic model would be very cool. Some animals could also be given extra variations like the Chapolsky's horse being given the Bay Dune um, variety seen in the horses um, found in zoos and in many wild populations as well. Um, some animals um, adding some major characteristics of sexual dimorphism, such as the hump of a male bear. In bison, both American and European, males possess larger humps, bigger heads, thicker necks and evenly curved horns. As Like right now, um, the males and female bison, um, they look almost identical except in size. So I think uh, that would be a good way to um, change that. And some better accuracy in skeletal and skull structure for some animals would be good as well. Um, hanging fur on animals that have longer, shaggier fur, such as the hair of a bison, the beard of a mark or the mane of a lion. So that would be um, a cool uh, thing to add. And orangutans as well. Oh, I almost forgot to write that down. The orangutan certainly needs hanging fur. Some new habitat tools would include ceilings and roofs, netting that can be stretched across the tops, whether it be actual wire or plastic netting, um, angled barriers that can be curved inwards and outwards, um, more climb proof options, clearer glass, a range of artificial rock pieces and also a variety of artificial tree pieces would allow us to prepare some very modern habitats, um, a mesh building set, natural burrows that are um, not always mounds, but, and it can simply be a chamber placed underground with custom tunnels that exit out into the rest of the habitat. Hollow logs, large concrete, corrugated iron and hard plastic pipes can also act as sleeping areas for animals while on exhibit. Many new enrichment items like a dust bath or even a climbing post for big cats to get a treat from the top of. Um, more puzzle enrichment, hanging items, log enrichments that anteaters can sort of break into among various others to give animals more exciting experiences. New feeder types that can be placed on the habitat barrier and water troughs that can do the same. This would just give a greater variety of how animals can be fed and nourished and it would be amazing to create a diverse range of habitats with all these different feeders. And some enrichment items like the mud bath and forage box can have the wooden border removed and make them blend into the habitat a lot better. And some enrichment items can blend into the exhibits better um, with even stuff like the forage wall coming in different varieties like one being big enough for elephants to use and potentially even being made of concrete to sort of blend into the habitat barrier. A set of backstage gates and pieces. So working gates, doors and hatches for animals to enter and exit their backstage areas and onto display at different times of the day. This set of different pieces will also help a zoo work more efficiently and could even work with a time of day system when the keepers will call the animals into this housing area for the night. 
On-site vet surgeries can also be done here for animals too big to go into the surgery or an alternative hospital that we'll talk about later. Or they have an injury that doesn't require such a move um, and a procedure can just be carried out in this backstage area. I know a lot of modern zoos, particularly in some um, renovated zoo exhibits, have uh, made way for this this sort of procedure. So I think the tiger track at Taronga Zoo, uh, the backstage areas there have got enough room for a vet check to be properly done without having to take the tiger all the way to their vet surgery. Um, something else could be also be default um, working backstage areas, sort of as prefabs for different kinds of animals determined by size and species, like backstage area for elephants not being the same as for giraffes and gorillas. For some animals like wombats, meerkats and other burrowing animals, a version of their doors can mimic a burrow entrance being of a similar diameter to the burrow entrances um, that you can place on exhibits to move the animals between the habitat and their housing area. So some new facility types that could be added into this new game include a delivery zone. So a delivery zone is where animals would be initially delivered to the zoo. Um, a parking lot, um, the zoo's parking area would be a great way to add realism to the zoos as visitors don't just appear. It'd be cool if guests were actually able to arrive to the zoo and park their cars. This could also work into a bus zone, um, which public transport would deliver guests to the zoo and from the zoo's entrance. Um, a veterinary surgery recovery enclosure or a quarantine enclosure um, would be a really cool way to add realism as after an event at the surgery, animals should be kept in temporary holding enclosures before being transported back to their habitats. Um, a zoo hospital would also be a great addition. If the zoo is big enough, a zoo hospital could be implemented, a facility large enough to treat more animal emergencies occurring at the same time, not to mention also being able to treat rescued wildlife. Um, a vehicle habitat gate would also be a great way to add more realism as this would allow vehicles to actually enter the habitat, staff vehicles that is, and restock feeders and enrichment items especially if the habitat is quite large, like a mixed species savanna. The habitat delivery gate would also be great. This would go onto the sleeping areas um, and backstage holding for animals. And this is where sort of a their, their delivery crates would be placed at the door and opened for the animals to just enter. And this is, I think this would just add a lot a lot better realism in how animals actually deliver to habitats as they're not just in a big wooden crate being carried by a person. It, it does sort of take time for some animals and working into the personalities if an animal is shy, um, I think that could work quite well as like the, the crate would remain there until the animal's competent enough to leave. I mean that would be fun but um, it's not really necessary like the current delivery system works just fine but for aquariums it would have to work a little bit differently so I think a a crane, particularly for the largest species, um, would work a lot better. So stuff like cetaceans um, and whale sharks and large sharks too, um, that would be a much more realistic way of actually getting the animals into those habitats. And it would also work for manatees too. Some staff utility vehicles could also be implemented. Zoo trucks will help transport animals faster, whether to deliver them to habitats more realistically or to get them to their veterinary surgeries quicker. Forklifts and cranes will also assist at the zoo's delivery zone and offloading new animals from the trucks and even into their habitats. Zoo utes or utility vehicles will be used to get staff around the zoos much faster. They'd also be able to bring fresh food and smaller animals that don't require a truck to be delivered to the habitat. Smaller carts can be used too, just for general work by mechanics, caretakers and vets and even by the keepers if they just need to get somewhere quick. New maps and biomes would also be great to add here. So some new biome ideas I have are the shrubland biome, the coastal and island biomes, as well as the wetland. So these, have, these new biomes would be really great for creating a whole range of different zoos with some unique map skirts. So I think that'd be really cool. And also separating grassland and savanna. Um, into two separate biomes as they're not quite the same. Um, each map having the region specific foliage that would be indicative of the area would be great as well. So like an Australian map actually having eucalyptus trees. Um, custom skirts could also be created by players. 
and maps can also be much larger if the player chooses. And if someone wants to create um, some zoos which have multiple facilities in a localised area. So one in particular is the Mandai Wildlife Reserve in Singapore, which has a great, a good amount of different parks all in the one area. So you'd be able to create um, the Bird Paradise Night Safari, Singapore Zoo and River Wonders and the upcoming Rainforest Wild um, all in the one place. So I think that would be really cool to do and I, I would certainly love to see that. With the addition of coastal maps, some coastal attractions would also be really cool, such as whale watching, actually being able to put a port down on the um, edge of the ocean where boats would take visitors out to see the wild whales and dolphins and potentially even other animals like great whites and leatherback turtles. And allowing wildlife to be able to pass by would also be a really cool feature to have, like you're working on your coastal zoo and you see a pod of whales um, going by breaching and all that stuff. I think that would just be really cool. So new guest attractions would also be great additions. Playgrounds and splash pads for your younger visitors. Um, guest accommodation, either rooms with windows into animal habitats, glamping in yurts, tents and cabins, right in view of the animals would also be great additions as well. Allowing guests to stay the night at your zoos and create a really unique experience for them. Guest transport would also be really cool features like buses, trams, carts, bikes, and even a revised gondola would also be a good addition. Guest binocular points would also be great for uh, large habitats, so guests can actually get a look at animals if they're very far away. Animal encounters and experience such as feeding giraffes and various other species, hose downs of elephants and other large animals, meeting lemurs and other animals in their habitats, particularly if the animals are friendly enough. Um, brushing animals, zookeeper for a day experiences would also be a really unique feature. These experiences would also be able to take place at specific encounter points that are placed at a specific part of the exhibit where the encounter could take place. And if the animal is safe to do so, such a point would be placed inside a habitat at a specific spot. And it can be just as subtle as a small wooden post with an icon of a hand to indicate that it is an interaction point. Animal feeding shows would also be great for crocodiles um, and presentations for animals like sea lions and flying birds would also be incredible. Um, some other attractions can include kayak tours, zip lines, flying foxes, that, that sort of thing. And a hot air balloon ride would also be a good addition as well to create some really unique experiences for guests. So a kayak tour could take you through a series of primate islands, zip lines could take you across a large savanna habitat, and a hot air balloon would allow you to see the, hot, the whole zoo from a very different perspective. Another really unique feature I, I could see added into this game is animal rescue and wild missions. So participating in missions involving the conservation of highly endangered species out in the wild, such as that of the Sumatran rhinoceros, Indri, and Ethiopian wolf. These missions don't necessarily need to be part of the base game, they could be part of DLCs. And another such mission could be to Antarctic waters, whether on the actual frozen continent or on islands like South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, where you can work with threatened species like that of the wandering albatross. Being able to rescue wild animals and rehabilitate them in captivity for as long as they need would also be good. And if they are suitable for release, they can be released back into the wild. These wild missions could play as the career scenarios for DLCs rather than being part of the base game. Species like bald eagles, leopard seals and whale sharks can be rescued and taken into your zoos and cared for, whether temporarily or permanently depending on our situation. And this could even work for other animals like great white sharks and orca who would be kept on a temporary basis and then released, although the orca is probably a bit more difficult in that regard. These species wouldn't be able to breed except for examples like that of the bald eagle and Sumatran rhino that have been successfully bred in captivity before. More variation in animal appearance would also be great, so variations in the horns of rhinos um, and various other animals, tusks, antlers, and even the manes of lions, as lions do have a very wide range of different manes that they grow and of different colors too. So I think that'd be really cool to add in to really create unique prides of lions. 
Just a few extra things such as the capture mode like in Jurassic World Evolution 2 being added in to um, create unique screenshots and images. Um, a slow motion option on top of that would also be really cool. Um, some other general things would also be reworking animal and scenery hitboxes. A first person keeper mode to work with the animals and do the jobs of a zookeeper um, would be great. More animal education props and a whole set of signs for every animal in the art style of the latest DLCs. Um, ability to make a zoo map, more zoo props, elevated null paths to blend with custom flooring, addition of elevators, escalators and travelators to help guests move around zoos more efficiently would also be cool. Elevators and um, escalators would be able to give guests a um, much more direct way of going up floors rather than having to create a winding path all the way up. The travelators would also be handy in aquarium tunnels to keep the guest flow moving from one end to the other. Also, animals not really minding the kind of plants in their habitats, or in some cases having some plants not being recommended to be planted in a habitat because they could get either destroyed or consumed, such as placing bamboo in a panda habitat. Some animals could also be more agreeable with different terrains, such as camels liking a bit more grass than sand. Reducing the habitat space requirements for hippos and polar bears, making them a little bit easier to care for and a bit more realistic for a zoo setting. And statues that can have their positions altered to make a diverse range of different displays for a wide range of species. So that is about everything that I can think of for Planet Zoo 2 right now. I will be doing some specific wi um, wish list videos and species speculation for the Avery habitat exhibit and aquarium species. But there's a whole range of other stuff that is compiling in the community, and hopefully, almost all of it can be added as part of the release version or in later updates. Um, but these are the biggest things that I want from Planet Zoo 2 that I think would really make it possibly the best zoo game of all time. I know a lot of people do prefer Zoo Tycoon 2, but hopefully some of these new features will make it a lot better. But let me know what you guys would like to see in the sequel, and um, yeah, leave those thoughts down in the comments, and I will see you all in the next one. Let the anticipation for Planet 2 2 begin.